Hi, Micropuncture here. This here is a 3D printed uh, microtome and in this video I'm going to show you how I made this. Um, already um, in a previous video I already showed you how to make uh, this um, small do-it-yourself microtome um, and one of my viewers actually wrote a comment and said that if you have a 3D printer then you could actually also print your own microtome and this is what I've done. Um, so I downloaded uh, the file for this microtome here and I 3D printed it and yeah I'm going to simply show you how this is done or how I have done that um, and then later on at the end I'm also going to test it out whether it actually works uh, sufficiently well. First of all for those of you who do not know what a microtome is um, you use microtomes uh, for microscopy to make very thin cuts of uh, tissue. Um, you have to understand that you need a approximately um, a one cell layer thick uh, section and what you do is, is there is a hole here in the microtome and you put the specimen into this uh, yeah into the hole. Um, so for example I'm going to be using a carrot uh, because it's uh, quite a suitable one to, to cut. Uh, you put it in here and by turning uh, the handle down here what happens is, is that you're advancing the um, the carrot the specimen out a little bit and then uh, you are able to use a sharp knife and you're able to slice it um, and this uh, can give you extremely thin um, thin cuts now there are of course uh, commercial microtomes available um, low-cost commercial microtomes um, cost around I've bought some for about 70 to 80 euros um, but if you already have access to a 3D printer, which mine costed only about twice as much, 160, 150, 160 euros, so they're quite cheap already. So if you have access to a 3D printer, it's also something that uh, you might want to try, and I also wanted to simply try it out. So yeah, so um, I'm, let's get started. I'm first going to show you uh, my 3D printer and how that works, and then I'm going to be 3D printing this microtome. The name of the plastic used is called PLA. It melts at a temperature of around 200 degrees centigrade. It's fed into the 3D printer um, on one side here. It goes in this tube all the way down to the nozzle and it's the nozzle that heats up to 200 degrees. And then a little bit like a glue gun, um, it extrudes uh, the molten material. And there is a chip card reader, so the file that is supposed, supposed to be printed is uh, directly put into the computer of the 3D printer and there is also a control interface where you can make all of the necessary adjustments. Well, I downloaded the file uh, from Thingiverse. Uh, thank you to the person who designed this microtome. And uh, as you can see, there are two different versions here. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later and I have chosen one version and in this program you prepare the file for 3D printing and uh, there are three parts uh, to this microtome. And printing the microtome actually took quite a long time, several hours. Um, I did speed up the printing process but then the quality was not so good, it was not quite as regular but uh, it's fine. Um, yeah, um, you have to kind of take it off here, it sticks uh, to the platform and uh, you all remove all of the excess uh, plastic that's not necessary and uh, it gives me a very solid and a very good um, impression um, and a very useful useful thing I think. Initially I had some problem finding a screw of uh, the appropriate length uh, so I had to check several hardware stores but yeah uh, luckily I found one. And uh, another thing I just wanted to mention is, is that there are two versions um, of this microtome available. You can see that uh, right now I attached uh, the washer here um, on top of, of the surface, so it's a little bit um, of top of the platform. So you see it's a little bit higher uh, than the rest of the platform. But there's another version um, where the washer is flush over the platform. I chose this version because I did not know about the washer size, and it gave me simply more flexibility concerning that. But ultimately, I think it's a little bit a question of taste. Um, one of the problems that I found out, however, with this washer is, is that um, when you glide your, the knife over it, there seems to be a little bit, a lot of friction. Um, and uh, I think it's not as smooth as it could be or should be. So I might need to sand it a little bit. Um, but otherwise, I think it's going to work. So I went to the hardware short store, 
to buy all of the remaining uh, parts that are needed uh, and I was testing them whether they actually had the correct size. Uh, this one here fit in but it was way too long so I have to go for a shorter one. And here these are all of the parts uh, that you need. Uh, there are three 3D printed parts, the washer goes on top here. This will be the place uh, where you glide the, sl uh, the, the sharp knife uh, over the specimen and then also the main part and the handle have to be connected and there is a nut that goes into the body of the microtome and the bolt, the screw goes into the handle. Um, I will be using uh, hot glue uh, to glue it in. I did find out however that uh, this does not always uh, hold very well so maybe epoxy would be a better solution. Yeah, and there is also a little plug in here that goes between the bolt um, and uh, the specimen. Yeah, so I'm now using a hot uh, glue, a hot glue gun uh, to glue the parts together. Um, and uh, you sim I simply did it like this. Maybe it um, would have been good to also preheat uh, the screw a little bit, uh, but it also worked like this. Yeah, then also on the other side, I also wanted to hold the, uh, the nut um, in place. Uh, so um, I had uh, to use some excess uh, uh, glue here but the problem was that that it actually then also spread um, and then I had to use a screwdriver to remove all of the excess later on to clean everything off again so but uh, ultimately it uh, did uh, work uh, quite well so let's uh, see let's try it out uh, this goes in here of course and uh, then um, I discovered uh, that uh, it was actually quite uh, easy to turn yeah and this is um, how it looks like um, I also attached uh, the washer and you can see that uh, it uh, is higher than the rest of the platform. So there's also a little plug um, that goes in there. I think this one is actually optional. At the beginning I had some problems pressing it in, but then with a little bit of force uh, I was successful. Okay, so this is basically how it looks like. So now let's, uh, let's try it. Uh, I put a piece of carrot in there and uh, using a sharp knife I tried to do my first cuts. And I discovered uh, quite quickly that the knife was not uh, sufficiently sharp. And the first cuts were not quite successful because uh, I found out that the knife actually lifted out the carrot a little bit. Um, so it was actually cutting deeper than it should have. You see, so even though I turned it out, uh, it was kind of uh, gliding over it because the edge of the knife could not catch the carrot. Well, I'm now using a different knife, uh, one that is uh, less flexible, maybe also a little bit sharper. And it did work better, um, as a matter of fact. Um, and the cuts that I received this way were a little bit uh, thinner um, as well. But I think one of the reasons is because the cutting board knife that I used before was already a little bit old. I should have exchanged the blade. Um, but I still found that uh, forwarding or advancing the specimen upwards was not always as reproducible as it could be because sometimes the carrot got a little bit stuck uh, because the carrot itself is also a little bit flexible um, and uh, then even though I turned the, the handle um, it did not always advance the carrot so this is uh, one of the disadvantages of this uh, type of microtomes. Um, there is um, a commercial microtome that I'm going to show you just in a second for which I paid around 70 to 80 euros so around maybe 90 US dollars and uh, this uh, commercial microtome has a clamp uh, so I'm just going to show you now how this looks like. Yeah, that's the commercial one. And you see there's a, bla a black plastic clamp in there. I'm holding now a piece of cork that uh, I was microtoming. And uh, this uh, gave the whole thing much more stability, of course. Now that's, that's a potato. And I also found that the potato was easier to cut. Um, and uh, this was also, this also kind of shows that it's not only the microtome or the presence of a clamp, but also the, the consistency of the specimen. Uh, somehow the, the potato was significantly softer than the carrot. And uh, this way I was able to get also a slightly thinner sections. I'm just going to show you in a second uh, how this looks under the microscope, of course. And we're going to see that indeed there are uh, fewer cell layers in, in the potato. So I was able to get a, a thinner cuts this way. But uh, usually it's like this. You just have to try. Um, uh, if uh, the results are not the way that you expect, uh, go for quantity. Um, because this way uh, the chances are higher that some of the specimens uh, will be uh, uh, suitable. Yeah, so I'm simply going to put both of them on, on, on the slide like this, um, a droplet of water um, as a mounting medium that's important for the refractive index. I'm mentioning this because there have been some questions from some of my viewers 
So uh, mounting medium like water and a cover glass are important. The optics are designed in such a way that uh, they, the specimen has a cover glass and a mounting medium. That's uh, the mass of the optics is like this, so to say. Yeah, and that's the carrot, okay? Um, so we can already see the individual cells. I have to go in a little bit further with the magnification. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna zoom, uh, not zoom, I'm going to focus through the whole section. I'm gonna uh, count how many cell layers I can see here. So maybe one, and maybe then the next cell layer two, and then three. So I counted around three cell layers um, in the carrot, these dark circles, these are ear bubbles, by the way. Um, so let's go in further. So that's one cell layer. Then when I focus, so then the second cell layer goes into focus and I'm already out of focus. So let's try again. It's the first cell layer. I continue focusing. Now the second cell layer goes into focus slowly. And then um, also the third cell layer, so maybe two to three cell layers. It's not um, always uh, quite uh, quite easy to see because we're of course dealing with a three-dimensional structure. And of course uh, the potato, these are the starch grains of the potato. Um, and that's, uh, they look quite nice. Uh, so, and I'm gonna try this, a similar thing uh, here as well. I'm gonna focus through it and I found that uh, there were approximately two cell layers thick. Now I know you cannot look at a potato uh, without uh, trying different um, optical methods. So this is dark field. So the starch grains do look quite different here. Okay, so you do not see the cell walls so much anymore. But this one, and this here is of course polarization microscopy. You cannot look at a potato without uh, polarized filters. It's just a given, so to say, um, because they just look so beautiful. But again, here we do not see the cells anymore, but the focus is on the starch grains. And there are plenty of things that you can try out. Well, check out my video that I made on polarization microscopy to see how I've done that. So that's, that's it. Um, I wish you all the best. Uh, leave your comments uh, below. Um, maybe there are some additional suggestions that you have, how this could be improved. Um, please uh, also have a look at uh, my uh, Amazon uh, affiliate shop. There is also a link below in case you're interested in buying micro microtomes and other microscopy accessories. Yeah, there is a yeah a, a shop where collected um, yeah a whole bunch of products uh, that uh, basically can be quite useful, hopefully at least for for um, amateur microscopists. And that's it. If you liked it, subscribe to the channel and. Happy micro punting as always and see you around next time. Bye bye.